you know as diplomats as ambassadors as consul generals and in various positions i'm sure you meet um people in public life ministers you meet prime ministers you meet uh, the chief ministers you meet businessmen and you meet uh, people of uh, various hues and shades uh, across the spectrum in in india when you're when you're positioned here one of the things uh, you know i keep repeating wherever i go especially because diplomats have a fixed stint a tenure you know you're here in the country for a few years and then obviously you go wherever your job takes you one of the things i keep hearing because i have been a minister now representing the industry and commerce department the information technology department for the last 8 years wherever i travel along with my team one of the questions we keep getting is you know this uh, comparison that gets drawn between india and china because you know both the large countries you know similar size in terms of population we are about 1.4 billion people i think they are 1.43 billion or 1.44 and i am sure india will i think uh, very soon i think in the next few years actually be the most populous nation in the world so one of the, one of the things i keep hearing for lack of for lack of information for lack of understanding i guess is if china can get something done so quickly why is it different in india is what i keep getting asked i urge all of you to kindly whenever you are faced with this question because this is one thing that i have been saying all along you know india and china in fact are very very different in terms of uh, in terms of how they are uh, you know perceived and how they are structured as well india is a very heterogeneous very diverse very uh, very very diverse country in fact if you ask me india is more like europe you know a mini continent so to speak with so many different languages so many cultures because if you travel the length and breadth of india jayesh was saying you know the best way to understand india is to travel to the states if you travel the length and breadth of the nation you will realize and you will see that everything in india changes every 100 to 200 kilometers the language the culture the dialect the cuisine the way people think the way people dress everything changes in india in every 100 150 kilometers in india we have 22 official languages we have more than 300 unofficial languages in fact we are so big as you all know even the smallest of towns in india sometimes are possibly the largest in europe or elsewhere you know in terms of numbers in terms of volumes so the best way to understand india if you ask me because we are a federal republic and we have just completed 75 years of independence if you ask me the best way to understand india is to actually understand the federal structure of india because each state by itself is empowered to make all the important decisions with respect to investments you know while the overall trade and foreign trade you know uh, and also tariff related issues could be vested with government of india the fact is the real action is in the states in india everything that matters when it comes to making an investment land cost of land water manpower power electricity and everything else that is required fiscal incentives all of these are in the domain of the state so i tell a lot of my friends you know when i meet them potential investors about this old story uh, that is narrated in indian uh, mythology you know there was once upon a time an elephant and eight blind men around it all these blind men wanted to experience and understand what an elef elephant actually looks like because they have never seen or they have never been able to feel one in their life so they were all taken to a zoological park and this is an elephant they were all you know positioned at various points around the elephant in the room in in the zoo in the den each of them felt one thing one felt the trunk another one felt the legs another one felt the humongous body another gentleman felt the tail somebody else felt something else but each of them after the experience were asked so how was it 
One said, you know, it's humongous. Another said, no, it's not. It's actually very slender, very long, very hairy, if I may say so. So each of them had a very different experience of the elephant. Same is the case with India. It all depends on which gateway you choose to enter India. Because, you know, your experience of India will hinge, will depend, will be predicated on which gateway you choose to enter India through. If you enter India through Hyderabad and Telangana, your experience will be very different than when you enter through, say, Uttar Pradesh. It's a very different experience because we work very differently. Our cultures are very different. Our thinking is very different. Some states are more progressive. Some states are more advanced. Some states are more adept at change. The point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, I know the story was a little longer than anticipated possibly, but the point I'm trying to make is, please choose your gateway wisely when you're investing in India. Because your experience, your memory or your opinion of India will actually hinge on the gateway you choose to invest through. Having said that, two years ago, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji had invited all of us to Delhi to talk about what we need to do to make India truly a first world country over the course of next 25 to 50 years. And from the government of Telangana, from my political party here, I represented the state of Telangana. Now, I had only told him three things. I said, sir, if we really have to ensure India becomes a first world nation, then we have to buy, subscribe, and adhere to the three I mantra. What are the three I's? The first I stands for innovation. The second I is infrastructure. The third I is inclusive growth. These three I's together will propel India truly into the orbit of growing nations, into the orbit of the first world countries. Now, before, before I elaborate further on the three eyes. Let me just quickly give you a snapshot of what my state has achieved over the last eight years. Telangana is the youngest state in India. For those of you who are unfamiliar as to why this is the youngest state in India, the constitution of India allows for the formation of new provinces, for the formation of new states, unlike some other countries. So as a result of a protracted struggle for decades, the state of Telangana came into being on the 2nd of June, 2014. The capital city is Hyderabad, which is the fifth largest city in India and one of the fastest growing cities in India. The geographic, if you look at uh, the geographical size of Telangana, we are 12th largest in terms of geogra geographical size among 28 Indian states. But if you look at population, we're 11th largest state in India. So by no means are we a small state. We are a mid-sized state. Now, what has Telangana done in the last eight years which is remarkable? What makes it special among Indian states? The numbers will speak for themselves. The GSDP of Telangana, the gross state domestic product of Telangana, when the state was formed, was 5,6,000 crores. I don't know in dollar terms, I can't uh, I can't give you an exact number right now, but just to give you a percentage, I can, I can. And about as of March 31st this year, the GSDP of Telangana is 11.55 lakh crores, almost 130% increase. The per capita income of Telangana was 1.24 lakh rupees back in 2014. As of March 31st this year, it is 2.8 lakh rupees. Just to give you a comparison, the average per capita of India as a nation is 1.49 lakh rupees. Telangana is almost double the per capita of India, the rest of national average. If you look at the expansion of agriculture in Telangana, because of the fact that we have taken it upon ourselves to construct some of the largest projects in the world. In fact, we have constructed in a very short span of time, about four years, the world's largest lift irrigation project in our uh, state. And that is the result why you see the irrigated land also has expanded from 
62.5 lakh acres in 2014 to almost 1.36 crores or 136.9 lakh acres, which is almost double, even more in fact, uh, right now. It's 119% to be precise. Mm -hmm.